end of Surah Al-Baqarah and the first half of Surah al Imran. And over the past two days, we covered the uh, tafsir, very basic tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. Today, I just want to mention a few words about Surah al Imran and its position in the Quran. Right. So, we mentioned some of the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah last week or yesterday. And there was one hadith I left for today because it involves both Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah al Imran. And this, that hadith comes in a variety of different forms. Uh, but the general message is that on the Day of Judgment, the Qur'an will intercede for us. And then the Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned two surahs. That if we recite them often, they will intercede for us. And those two surahs are Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah al Imran. And he described them like two clouds of light that will come on the Day of Judgment and they will intercede for us. Now, these two surahs are the two, two of the longest surahs in the Qur'an. And so we don't recite them as often as we do the other surahs. But this hadith served as motivation to us to pick up and to start reciting them more often. Now, what is Surah Ala Imran about? When you look at the surah first, you may wonder why there's so many different topics in it. The surah speaks about the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him, and Mary. It addresses the Jews. Uh, it discusses the battle of Badr. It discusses the battle of Uhud. It seems to be a mixture of subjects. But when you look at it in terms of when it was revealed, everything makes sense. Because Surah Ala Imran was revealed in the third year after Hijrah. What happened in the third year after Hijrah? They're dealing with the aftermath of the Battle of Badr. And then in the third year of the Hijrah, they also deal with the Battle of Uhud. Also in that year, the delegation of Christians come from Najran and they want to know about Islam. And what does Islam say about Jesus? Also in that year, the Jews begin to make noise and to fight and, and to reject the messenger and to try and, and get the Muslims out of, of the Madinah. So in that year, the third year after Hijrah, the Muslims are dealing with the aftermath of the Battle of Badr. On top of that, the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud. They're dealing with the Christians, they're dealing with the Jews. So why are these four subjects all mixed together in this one surah? Because these four things were happening around the same time. And so this surah was revealed throughout that year. It's covering all of the political events that took place during that year. So when we are reciting the surah tonight, you will hear mostly, the, the segment we're going to focus on most tonight will be uh, on the verses addressing the Christians, right? It will go through the story of the birth of Mary, Mary alayhi salam, how she was born, that her parents, Imran and Hannah, and the surah is named after Imran, it's called the family of Imran. Her, fam her parents, they were expecting a boy, and they were going to dedicate that boy to worship at, 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 the, at, the, at the temple, and when she was born, they were why did we have a girl? And in that culture, women wouldn't do this kind of thing. They wouldn't go and dedicate themselves to worship. And Allah made her not just special, He made her the greatest woman to ever love. And so from her, we then see that she has a miraculous child in the form of Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam. And in the surah, the full aqidah of Islam in relation to Mary and Jesus is laid out. It's laid out crystal clearly, so crystal clear that the end of the set of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays down the challenge. And this challenge was then put forth by the Prophet wasallam to the Christian delegation. And the challenge is that if you believe you are upon the truth, and we believe we are upon the truth, let us ask Allah to curse the liars. And the Christians said, we're not going to do that. We don't, we don't want to take a charge. We might be on the truth. And so they went back to their lands, and this became the verse that settled it. This, this surah settles clearly whose aqidah or whose beliefs are stronger. So this is what we'll be reciting tonight, inshallah. Surah Allah Imran does go on into the fourth Jews, which we will discuss tomorrow. Uh, those verses focus more on the Battle of Uhud. So inshallah, tomorrow we'll discuss the Battle of Uhud a little bit and some of the lessons that we can take from that. Subhanahu wa rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillah wa rabbil alameen.